The clip you are about to listen to is an excerpt from the audio teaching Growth by Multiplication. We hope you are greatly blessed by this teaching. From the parable of the talent, we see that the Father expects you to multiply whatsoever he commits into your hands, be it the word of the Lord, be it the donation, and most importantly, your finances. Now the Father wants you to grow your finances by multiplication, not so that not just so that you can give more to the work of the ministry or give more in your local church for your tithes and offering, but more so to so that you can finance that vision, that dream that He has put in your heart, that assignment that only you has been empowered to perform here on earth. After all, the scripture says that the body is sustained by what is supplied by every member of the body, but through the joints. Amen. Glory to God. And for those of you that don't care about so much about the body of Christ, maybe just too selfish to care about, of supplying to the body of Christ. Never forget the parable of the talent, the story of that one servant that refused to multiply the talent that was given unto him. I want to begin this teaching by reading from the book of 3rd John chapter 1 and verse 2 which says dearly beloved I wish above all things that they, thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as thy soul prospereth so it becomes clear that it is the father's will for you that you prosper that you prosper is the father's will and then also from Psalms chapter 35 and verse 27, if you are with your Bible, please turn with me as we establish the foundation for this teaching. He says, Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, that is our focus, let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. His honor and prosperity of his servant, the Father is interested in it. And that is why, again, Jesus Christ speaking in the book of Mark, chapter 10. Now, the scripture says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter is established. And in order to prevent your faith being founded on the wisdom of men, I will be given for every truth at least two scriptures that your faith may be founded on the word of God and not on the wisdom of men's speech. Now, Mark, chapter 10, 29. To 30, Jesus Christ speaking to his disciples said, Not one person that would give up his house, his family, his children for his sake that wouldn't receive an hundredfold in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and in the world to come eternal life. So we see that prosperity is the Father's will. And now today we're going to be focusing more, especially on financial prosperity and before we proceed deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18 i need to understand biblical truths as regards prosperity financial prosperity it is the father that makes rich it is the father that makes rich not the strength of man not your ability not your strength not any other force riches are from god 8 18 deuteronomy but thou shalt remember the lord thy god for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, and it is this day. He giveth thee power to get wealth by reason of the covenant. So it is the father that makes rich. He is the one that giveth wealth. Psalms 75 verse 6 says, For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. James 1.17 is the source of every good and perfect gift. For James chapter 1 verse 17, if you're there, you will find out that it says every good and perfect gift is from above and cometh from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, no shadow of turning. Now, third biblical truth and prosperity. I believe someone has been blessed already. It's 
Wealth is independent of situations and your job. Listen, it doesn't matter what your situation is. It doesn't matter what job you are doing right now. Genesis chapter 26, 1 to 4. Isaac, in the midst of famine in the land of the Philistines, was ready to move to the place of Egypt. But God said unto him, Stay and sow in this same land where there is famine. So it doesn't matter the economic situation of your country. It doesn't matter the economic situation of even the state and even the place you're dwelling in. Because... Wealth is independent of situations or jobs. In the same chapter of Genesis 26, by reason of his obedience, we see in verse 12 to 14 that he sowed in that same land and he got hundredfold. In other words, the famine did not bring about a loss in his productivity. The famine did not bring about reduction in his harvest. And 14, by the end of 14, he says he grew so mighty that the Philistines envied him. Imagine a man being the envy of a whole nation even in the midst of a famine, because wealth is independent of situation and your job. First Chronicles 13 to 14 speaks of the man whom the Ark of the Covenant was kept with. And he says, And God blessed all that he did. Now it didn't matter what his trade was, he was just blessed and he prospered. It didn't matter if he was a tent maker, it didn't matter if he was a rarer of sheep, it didn't matter if he was a farmer or just a petty trader, but he was blessed richly of the Lord. He was blessed richly of the Lord. Why? Because the Ark of the Covenant was with Obededon, because the wealth and riches are independent of situation. Prosperity can be an experience no matter what your job is. You might right now just be a petty trader. You might be self-employed, pursuing a certain business that looks so small that may not be producing anything. Listen to me. As long as you are in the right place, that business can produce wealth. That job can produce wealth. That nation in which you are, you can still find prosperity in it. You don't have to go to the west. You don't have to go to the east. As long as the Father is with you, no matter the situation, you can produce and get prosperity in that place. What more? The Father has the ability to create and make wealth out of nothing. Now, this is very important. As the Lord lays in my heart, he might be right now thinking of giving up your evil ways and you're wondering, if I should give up my ways, would I lose everything? Would I lose all my riches? Would I lose all my increase? Listen to me. God has the ability to create wealth out of nothing. That was the story of Job, who lost everything and all that he had, not just his riches, but also family. But Job chapter 42 makes me to understand that when it was time for his increase, that the Lord turned the captivity of Job, yes, and he gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now, Job had absolutely nothing. He lost everything, but he gave him twice as he had before his calamity. So it means that even if you lose everything, God has the ability to give you twice that which you had even before you lost everything out of nothing. Genesis chapter 32 verse 10 talks about Jacob who says to the Lord, who am I that you should be so gracious to me? I crossed this place with just my staff and I am going back as two bands. That is Genesis 32 verse 10. This was a man that crossed over to his uncle's place with just a staff in his hand. He had nothing, but God created wealth out of that nothing he had. So that in 33 verse 11, when he was speaking to his brother, Genesis 33 11, he saw, he said, Take that which I am offering to you because I have enough. Now, listen to me. As long as you are in the right place, even if you are selling akara or whatsoever it is, you can still experience prosperity. I remember the story of a man who began his walk into wealth by moving and uh, excavating human excreta. And today he's experiencing a certain degree of increase in wealth. Why? Because it's independent of situation, your job is independent of the economic situation. It's independent if you have a cap if you have capital or not. All you need to know is that the Father's will for you is prosperity and that he can make this prosperity out of nothing now. Before we go on, let us understand what prosperity, financial prosperity, really is. Psalm chapter 23 gives us the definition of prosperity. The psalmist speaking says, The Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 23, I shall not want. And then verse 5, he says, He anointed my head with oil, my cup 
run it over. Now, because the Lord is a shepherd, therefore verse 5 happens that he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup run it over. Prosperity, son, daughter of God, is not about having enough for yourself. Prosperity is having more than you need. Prosperity is having more than you need. Now this reminds me of the, what the Holy Spirit told me. He said, son, which is cool. so, so amazing. He said, whatever I give to you is more than enough. Remember the scripture says he's able to do abundantly above all we can ever ask, think, or imagine. So listen to me. Whatsoever you receive is always more than enough at that point in time. Think about the widow who came unto the prophet and said, all I have is a bottle of oil. It was more than enough for her at that point in time. So you always have enough for your seed and you always have enough to give. Now we're talking, expanding more on this as we move on. But listen to me, whatever you have is always more than enough. Now, and that is prosperity is not just having enough for yourself, but it's about having in abundance so that you can meet the need of others. The truth of prosperity is this. God blesses you. He blesses me. He blesses his children. Our Father blesses us so that we can become a blessing. Our Father blesses us so that we can become a blessing. Speaking to Abraham, he says, I will bless you. He says, he that blesses you shall be blessed. He that curses you shall be cursed. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Genesis 12 verse 3. In other words, he was prospering him that he might be a source of blessing and prosperity to others. And if you're with your Bible, you can also turn to Ephesians chapter 4. And here in verse 28, we see something amazing. Paul speaking says, Let him that steals, steal no more, but let him labor, working with his own hand, that which is good. Why? Is it so that he may satisfy his own hunger? Is it so that he might be found to be righteous and holy? No. He says, So that he might be able to give to those that need. And that is the whole idea behind prosperity, having to give. So listen to me. If you are not a source of blessings to others, then you are not yet living in the realm of prosperity. If you are not a source of blessing to others, then you are not yet prosperous. Because in Deuteronomy chapter 15 and verse 6, we see something amazing. It says that I will bless you as I have promised. Now let me just read it the way it is. It says, For the Lord our God blessed thee as he hath promised. And because of this blessing, you shall lend unto many nations and shall not borrow. So in other words, you are blessed so that you can lend. And until you become a source of blessings to others, you are not walking in the prosperity which the Father had determined or had proposed in his heart for you, which is his perfect will for you. Check in Deuteronomy 28 verse 12. We see that re-echoed again, that you are blessed that you might learn. More so, you are blessed as a son of the kingdom that the Father may be glorified. John 15 verse 8. Herein is your Father glorified if you bear much fruit. Emphasis much not just fruits, but much fruits. Your much fruits glorify the Father. And then again, we see it about Solomon that was blessed on every side. And we see it in Second Chronicles chapter 9, verse 8. Let, let, let me take you there. Second Chronicles chapter 9, verse 8. Solomon was blessed of the Lord so richly in riches, so that he fulfilled the scripture that said, He shall lay up gold as dust. But then he says, concerning Solomon, the queen of Sheba, speaking, says, Blessed be the Lord thy God, we delighted in thee to set thee on the throne, to be king for the Lord thy God, because thy Lord thy God loveth Israel, to establish them forever. Therefore made he the king over them to do judgment and justice. Solomon was the one blessed, but the glory was going unto the Father. The glory was going unto God. That is the essence of uh, our blessings. That is the essence of prosperity. That is the true definition of prosperity. You are prosperous when you have enough and abundance to give. You are prosperous when you are a blessing to others. And you are prosperous when you bear so much fruit. I'm talking about financial prosperity now. Such that the Father is glorified. Listen to me. It is not humility in any way to hide the blessings of the Lord. Instead, it is the sign of pride. Is a sign of ingratitude and remember he says i will cause your blessings he prays because you have not laid it to heart to bless me to give things unto me to express gratitude 
And I believe that you are not among the group that shall have their blessings turned to a cause by reason of ingratitude. Let the world know what the Father is doing. And can I hear a believing Amen? I say, can I hear a believing Amen? Now, many are scared of the oh, of increase by reason of the fear of being pierced with true sorrows, those that seek to be rich, and many others believe that money is the root of all evil. But listen to me, I want to show you from scriptures. I don't want to be going into the debate about that, but we'll just move on. Listen, what is money? What is the need for money? What does the scripture say about money? One, as you are concerned as a son of the kingdom, money is a tool to create your degree. In this extensive teaching on how to grow your finances, you will discover, one, the biblical foundation for your prosperity, two, the seven biblical ways to multiply your finances amongst other truths. You can order the CD set or DVD of this approximately two hour, 30 minutes teaching by calling any of our contact lines on plus 234-704-617-7075 or plus 234-812-117. 6531 or by sending an email to vop at iinchrist.org. That is vop at iinchrist.org. The teaching is also available as a free download on the download segment of our website. Giving is not the only way to multiply your finances. Learn other ways as recommended by the Father.